Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to be having another reality off the cuff. This will be number four. Um, and these are like episodes where I kind of like free myself to talk about whatever I want, you know, which really a lot of times brings up a lot of points that I wouldn't ordinarily say, which is good. Okay, <laughs> I'm running on low energy today because I'm kind of like battling a cold. I was in Manhattan last uh, yesterday pretty much all day, and so like <laughs> there's a cost to everything. Okay, so what do I want to say? Um, I just like, you know, I'm going to start off with, with the, you know, the biggest thing. I mean, this is like evolutionary. Um, we're like creating a new human species by transcending the illusion of free will, by overcoming this, this illusion. Um, and, well, to explain that is like ordinarily, you know, our evolutionary designations instead of, you know, in terms of species and phyla and all that stuff are, um, for the most part, physiological. You know, they, um, they refer to changes in our ana anatomy. Um, but, but although we, you know, we have the same anatomy, um, you know, we, we, to the extent that we, um, collectively, you know, as a humanity, um, overcome this illusion and understand that, that reality and our call and our will, um, everything we think, say, and do is, um, is completely determined by factors and causes outside of our control, that, that the universe is causal. I mean, to the extent we understand that, um, we're creating an, a consciousness that is polarly opposite to the consciousness we have now. I mean, our consciousness now is like, yeah, I can decide whatever I want, and nothing that I'm not in control of is compelling any of this. And you can understand <laughs> okay, I've got to talk softly. You can understand why, you know, I mean, like, not only is that completely insane to kind of like have a perspective of reality opposite to the way things are, but, um, you know, it, it, I, in my estimation, it's kind of like just harmful. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty convinced of that. Um, so, yeah, so I'm thinking we should, you know, the new designation, and, and naturally, you know, this is going to take a while. Who knows how long? You can't predict this. It could happen in five years, actually. Um, it could happen in less time. Um, because we're so connected, you know, in terms of communication with the Internet and uh, mass media. But um, when this happens, you know, so like I'm thinking, well, what, what will be the... Um, <laughs> damn, I'm losing my voice. What will be a, a good title? For, um, for our new species. And I'm thinking, um, sound like Barry White. <laughs> I'm thinking, um, like, our current designation is Homo sapien. Homo meaning man, and sapien meaning, I think, knowing, you know, man who knows, who understands, whatever. But that's not a great, I mean, if we get wrong, if we get wrong, the uh, most fundamental aspect of our second most fundamental aspect of our human nature, um, then, um, then certainly we're not, you know, all that knowing yet. So, like, so I came up with something last night. Um, it would be homo causal will conscious, causal will with a hyphen between. Um, or no, no, um, between the hyphen between be between the will and the consciousness. Uh, and, and so who knows? I don't know. <laughs> um, we'll leave it up to, um, well, we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, so let's see. Yeah, this, I mean, this is historical now. Bringing it back to like earth in a sense, um, back to the ground. Um, what I'm experimenting with is, is really the, um, the benefit of this. I mean, you know, I do the shows to present the information so you understand what's going on, what, what our, our world is coming to understand. But, but um, 
you know, it's not a moot point. It's not um, inconsequential. Um, I've been finding through, um, through practice on myself, me being the subject of all this experimentation, um, that to the extent that I kind of like focus on this matter of human will and understand that it, our human will is causal and I have to do that naturally to do the shows and my other show in Manhattan, um, to the extent I do that, I'm kind of like working with the, these ideas a lot, you know, they're going through my head a lot. And so in a sense what I'm doing is I'm conditioning myself to more speedily remind myself that, um, that other people, that I um, don't have a free will and, and that we're ultimately not responsible for what we do. That, um, that to hold ourselves responsible, you know, literally, is, is just insane and, 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 and more, more, it's harmful. Um, the way it works is like, you know, we're, we're all like raised with a sense of justice, a sense of right and wrong. And, um, you know, it comes through our parents, through school, through um, our culture. So what happens is, um, and naturally we're all raised to believe in this delusion of free will. Oh, incidentally, I gotta, I hope I keep my train of thought. Um, incidentally, uh, I told you I'd, I'd bring in the sign that I carry. Um, I've been carrying this at Zuccotti Park, Liberty Square recently, but you know, I'll, I'll carry this, this sign, Transcend the Delusion of Free Will, down like Fifth Avenue when I'm in Manhattan on the way to my meetup once in a while. And, uh, and through White Plains. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, it's a cool sign. I gotta create more. Um, so, okay, so yeah, we're conditioned to have this like delusion of free will and we're conditioned to, um, to see what we and others do through a moral lens. And so what happens as a result of that is an inevitable result is that when people do things that they shouldn't, that we estimate are wrong for whatever reason, or if we do things that are wrong for whatever reason, to the extent that we can quickly remind ourselves that, wait a minute, they or I don't have a free will, that they or I are not ultimately responsible or completely compelled to do whatever it is that, that we did that was wrong, we think was wrong, then, then what happens is like, we say, fine, all right. It seems quite clear that the universe, the causal past, cause and effect, God, whatever you want to call it, the universal will, is, um, is compelling this person or me to, to do this wrong. And so then immediately, immediately the consciousness, our consciousness shifts from accusation and blame, you know, because that's what, what happens ordinarily. You know, when, when somebody does something wrong, we do something wrong. Um, once we recognize the wrong, the second stage is attributability or, 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 or uh, holding the person accountable in some way. And it may be a very slight way, but still. So like, so what happens is um, as I'm getting better at reminding myself more quickly that reality is causal and human will is causal, I can circumvent that blaming, that, um, that accountability that I would attribute to, to others and myself. And um, so, yeah, so what happens, um, yeah, we, we, um, the mind focuses on, well, why is this happening? Why is the universe compelling this person to, um, to act in this way or, or compelling me to act in this way that, that you know, seems wrong. Um, so that at that point, um, what happens is we move from like a, um, an adversarial kind of relationship with the other person or ourselves um, to an exploratory kind of relationship or kind of consciousness. Um, you know, we begin to wonder, well, yeah, I mean, like, 
why, and let's say, let's say it's a good friend, a really good friend or somebody very, very close who does something wrong. You know, instead of becoming angry at the person, with the person, and um, when that happens, that will often lead to like arguments and, you know, conflict. Instead of that happening, you, you know, if you, know, if you understand um, that free will is an illusion, that our, our wills are causal, then you're not going to go there. You're not going to blame the person. Um, and considering, you know, that, that anger, um, blaming is not, it's not really pleasant. I mean, it's, I suppose it can be in kind of like a, I don't know, insidious sense maybe, I don't know. But, um, but yeah, so like, you know, it, it's like, it's a wonderful way for us to kind of just like, um, not just free ourselves from this unnecessary and harmful blame, but also free ourselves from, um, from arrogance, you know. I mean, like, this is so cool because <laughs> I did a show on this um, recently. It's called The Messenger, and I have evolved human consciousness. So, yeah, he and I, um, we're bringing this message to the world, and the world is getting it. You know, there was just a, an article that I noticed last week in Scientific American Mind by... Um, this guy, Sean Nichols, who's a philosopher, and um, he presents a relatively good explanation of, of the, the matter, but um, he's, a, he's equivocal. He, he doesn't really understand how clearly and incontrovertibly um, free will is an illusion. You know, our, our human will is causal. But, but anyway, um, so yeah, the... the um, what we're doing is succeeding, and so that means that we are kind of pioneering the, uh, the evolution of human consciousness, you know, as, as we started before. So, like, you know, whoa, <laughs> isn't that amazing? So the, the cool thing is, like, um, and the reason I can, you know, what's really cool is, yeah, I don't like arrogance. You know, most of us don't. You know, arrogance is kind of like, by definition, um, perceiving yourself as quote, as quote, quote unquote, greater than you are or something, or better than others, like for no reason, for no good reason. Um, and so like to the extent that, um, that I remind myself that, um, that I'm just like a robot, I'm a puppet. <laughs> I mean, I have absolutely nothing to do with, <laughs> with what I'm saying right now, with, uh, with this grand um, mission <laughs> to, uh, to cure the world of its insanity of, of um, free will belief. So, um, so yeah, you know, it, it helps with arrogance to the extent we can um, prevent um, ourselves from you know, buying into the free will belief. Um, kind of helps with, well, it helps with guilt. And that's really, um, that's really kind of like the same explanation as with blame, except it's like directed toward ourselves, you know, um, when, um, when we do wrong, we tend to, um, to feel, well, if I did something wrong, you know, I deserve to be punished, because that's what we're taught, you know, and like, a lot of the, uh, that quote-unquote healthy psychology that it's taught, you know, as part of child rearing, and it's taught in, you know, psychology courses, is that, um, you want to condition a healthy kind of quote unquote consci conscience. In other words, I think we're. <clears throat> see, what happens is when we're raised, our parents are inculcating in us our moral values and principles. And part of that process is then to, um, to teach children to do that for themselves, to not have to rely on the parents for, for that moral guidance. So. Um, so yeah, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> Getting tired. Okay, we've got about um, twelve and a half minutes. Um, all right. So you understand. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm working on now. In addition, of course, to um, to this show, and and uh, you know, got to do a commercial for um, our show. Um, it's it's really it's the Messenger show. The Messenger is <laughs> my friend who. Um, 
who wants to re re um, remain anonymous on this. He doesn't want to use his real name. And um, he's producing a show in Manhattan on the Manhattan Neighborhood Network, which is the Manhattan cable station. They have four channels. It's, you know, it's cable cast to the entire island. And, um, and then it's also live streamed to the world. And, you know, his show, uh, which I'm co-hosting with him, is called The Myth of Free Will. And right now it's on at, um, on Wednesdays at 11. Actually, by the time this is shown, yeah, it should still be on. We're on right now Wednesday nights at 11 p.m. And this may change come um, mid-January uh, when the new quarter begins. But, um, but it's like the coolest show in the world because, I mean, like, you know, um, this show is good for for explaining, you know, the theory and the principles and the logic and the science of, of why our human will is causal. Um, but the myth of free will, uh, <laughs> the message of show is a live call-in show. <laughs> okay, so like, so we're there for half an hour kind of like explaining why free will is an illusion, why we have causal wills, but also taking calls from... Um, from people and it's fun <laughs> it's good all right that's my commercial um okay what else okay oh all right might as well do this um yeah every every show i kind of like go through the reasons why um our human will is causal why reality is causal and therefore our human will has to be causal so I might as well do that now. Okay. What happens is the fundamental premise that um, it's really a priori, it's, it's axiomatic, is that, um, you know, the fundamental process of the universe is change. Okay? Um... Now, what is change? Change is a, a word that describes one thing leading to another thing. Um, in terms of our physical universe, matter at one moment in time being at one place in time, and at the next moment being at another place in time, place in, in space and in time. And so that's change. It, it, it's, it, it refers to time because, like, we're, we're moving from moment to moment, um, from past to present to future. And that change, that, that movement is really particles moving through space in time. And, um, and see, without this change, the universe would be static. Nothing would move. You know, nothing would happen. It would be frozen static. So, so that's how fundamental... A characteristic um, of nature, change is. So, and you know, if we've just described change as um, as one thing causing another, as time, space, the laws of motion, momentum, um, etc., you know, making things happen, that is the fundamental process of the universe: causality, cause and effect. And um, so, basically. The understanding that we um, arrive at is that everything has a cause. Everything is caused. You know, there is a reason for things happening. Things don't just happen, you know, for no reason at all. They couldn't. Um, so, um, and that's, you know, this was known actually as early as the Greeks. Uh, um, yeah, the, uh, Lucippus. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. That's the thing, you know. Like, if I had a free will, I would. I got to do this. You know, it's embarrassing. I got to take the time to, because um, I did this before. You know, I went through a, you know, a dictionary with the, um, with the um, pronunciation of, of of Lucippus. I think I'm. It's L E U C I P P U S. Maybe I'm not sure. Um, but he said back. In 380 BC, I think, that um, 
nothing happens at random, but everything for a reason and by necessity. And it's re that's really like a statement of causality. That's really saying that everything that happens has a cause. And <laughs> once you get that, once you understand that, the rest is just like, you know, it just follows logically. Um, if everything has a cause, then um, everything we do has a cause. Everything we decide has a cause. Everything we feel, everything we think, everything we say. And so if there, are, if there is a cause, and we, we could either see this in terms of one cause, in the sense of it's the, actually the state of the universe at the prior moment to whatever we do, and then you know that causal regression that, that um, includes the, the entire universe, or you know mo more conventionally, you know, like you know if we want to boil some water, you know the the um, the boiling would be a result of like the atmospheric pressure and the temperature and things like that. So like if um, if every one of our decisions has a cause or causes, um, and every one of the cause or causes of our every decision, thought, feeling, etc., has um, a cause or causes, and every one of those cause or causes has a cause or cause. <laughs> Basically, you have this causal regression. It's like, you know, what happened here was caused by what happened the moment before, which was caused by what happened the moment before, which was caused by what happened the moment before, and it always stretches back in time, you know, moment by moment. And um, what happens is, like, you get to the point where things, the state of the universe, causes before you were born are causing quite directly you know, because nothing else is causing it, um, what we do, what, what, what we decide. So, so the state of the universe, or more conventionally, various causes that span back before we were born to before the planet was created, to presumably the Big Bang, um, that's, that's what's determining everything. That's what's determining every molecule, every particle in the universe. and. Um, and every um, decision we make. I mean, it's a cool explanation. I think you get it. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, there's another, um, perhaps more intuitive in some ways, um, main explanation why our, our human will is causal. It's a little complicated, but more complicated, though. And we only have about four minutes, so I'm going to try to um, go through it rather quickly. This idea that we have an, um, an unconscious, and um, basically, our consciousness is really awareness. In other words, like we can only be conscious of one, maybe a few things at a time. Okay, so at any time, that means at any time we're making a decision, um, the factors, the moral principles, the um, the learning, the um, the memories, you know, the the um, the factors that go into that decision. Since since they can't be in the un in the conscious in, in in our conscious awareness, at least all at once, you know, they um they reside in our unconscious. And um, and here's the thing: in order to make a decision, you have to kind of like cull through all that stuff and you know process it. And the cool thing is that like well. Okay, the unconscious, by definition, is something that our conscious mind is really only aware of when the unconscious decides to make it aware. And that awareness, again, as I said before, um, comes in just momentary awarenesses. Like, we can't be aware of, of everything in our unconscious. So it's kind of like our our consciousness is kind of like a spotlight. You know, the unconscious is spotlighting um, what it wants us to be aware of. And that's, to me, that's like a very, very cool um, way of understanding um, 
why our wills are causal because um, because it, you know it's it just like you know there's so much work on the unconscious there's there's so much psychological and neuroscientific um, work just demonstrating you know the workings the existence the um, the control of the unconscious and you know admit um, much of this research actually um, simply um, demonstrates that um, that we have an unconscious but but some of it actually for example um, the experiments based on Libet's um, I think 1970s experimentation where he um, he showed that like that um, he demonstrated that a researcher could could know what a subject of an experiment was going to decide before the subject of the experiment would know that fact themselves. And the way they did that was that they, um, whenever like our mind is about to do something, make a decision, there's something called a readiness potential. And this is actually for, for actions that involve muscles. Um, I'm um, running out of time. I've got about like 45 seconds. So basically, yeah, the idea is that um, now there's actually research saying that like they can actually tell 10 seconds before a person's aware, about 10 seconds, what they're going to decide. Clearly, that tells you that um, the unconscious is making that decision. All right, that's all we have time for today. So um, again, you know, like Wednesdays at 11 p.m., if you don't if you don't live in Manhattan, you know, the station live streams the show throughout the world. Just go to mnn.org, I think the website is. All right, so have a great time and uh, I'll see you soon on Exploring Illusion Free Will. Thanks. <laughs>